Hello, and welcome to this edition of the My Labs Trackside Training Videos, Introduction to Transponder Scoring. In this session, I will show you the basic procedures for transponder scoring in My Labs Trackside. You should watch video for managing transponder IDs and setting preferences for transponder scoring before watching this video. You should already have experience in Trackside with things such as creating an event, signing racers in an event, creating a race order, and all manual scoring functions. In order to keep this video from being too long, I will not cover every option the software has to offer. There will be more videos on advanced options for transponder scoring. To begin transponder scoring, you must first have an event open in Trackside. You should already have racers signed up with transponder numbers assigned, and you should already have a race order defined on the race order tab. Now, click the transponder menu and click the option for open scoring control. The window for a backup file number will open. You can select one and then click OK. The one is used in the automatic naming of the backup file log. The next window will ask you if you want to connect to the decoder. Of course the answer here is yes, unless you're doing some testing in your office and do not have a decoder to connect to. When you click yes, the software will now ask you for the IP address of the decoder. The decoder IP address can be set manually on the face of the decoder or it can be set to allow your router to assign the IP address. To find the IP address of your decoder, you can click the dot button on the face of the decoder and the IP address will display. Enter the IP address of the decoder and then click connect. You should get a quick response that tells you you are now connected to the decoder. If you do not get this response, check your network settings, close the transponder screen, and reopen it. You're now presented with the timing screen for MyLabs Trackside. Let me explain the three different windows you see on this screen. The window on the far left is the scanned records window. Once you've started timing, every time a transponder is detected, a record will be written to this window with the transponder number, the date and time of passing, and the hits and strength of the transponder. The most recent transponder to be detected will be written at the top of this window. Next look to the far right of the screen and find Entries in Race window. Consider this the transponder pool. It is a list of all the transponders that Trackside expects to be in the current timing session. When you are timing a practice, you should see all the racers in the list. When you are timing a race, you should only see the racers who are assigned into the exact race that you are timing. In the middle of your screen, you will see the announcer's data window. When a transponder passing is detected, the end result of processing the passing is displayed in this window. In practice mode, the lap number and lap time is shown along with the racer's name. In race mode, that same information is shown along with the current position. Now let's review the process for timing a practice session. It is a good idea to run the timing screen for practice before your racing begins so that you can test your timing system and also so that you can verify your data is accurate. Click the button at the top of your screen that says Start Timing. You are presented with a window to select timing for a race or for a practice. Select Practice and then click OK. Your scoring system is now ready to collect data as the transponders pass by. Looking at the window on the far right of the screen, you can see all the racing numbers who are signed up and the transponder numbers assigned to each racer. If you see any missing transponder numbers, you should go back to Trackside and assign a transponder number to the racer. Come back to this screen and then click Refresh. Now that you are timing practice, when a transponder is detected, Trackside will look in the list of transponders for practice to determine who the racer is. Now I will let some transponders pass by as if this were a practice session. For this testing, I set the minimum lap time to be just a few seconds. I'm going to give racers a few passings so that we have data to work with. Let's assume now that this practice session is over and the next practice session is about to begin. In order to clear the data and prepare to collect lap times for the next session, I will click the button Stop, Save, Start next. The scans from the scanned records window are saved to a text file and ready to be imported into your database. The screen is cleared out and is ready for the next practice session. 
The text file from the last practice session was saved in the folder that you had set under your preference settings. In order to load the practice lab times into the trackside database, you will need to import the scans. You will keep this session running. I'm going to jump back over to the trackside program to import the scans file. Click the import button to begin the process. The import window opens. Select practice scans and then the practice number. Now click on import file and select the scans file that was saved from the practice session. Click open. Trackside will now match all the scans to the racers and store the data in your database. After the import routine is complete, you can print reports from the options on the screen. When you have completed, click the close button. I'm now going to jump back over to the timing screen, which would be timing the current practice session on the track. This process for timing practice is repeated over and over until practice is complete. When you're ready to start timing a race, you will click the option to stop timing so that we can restart in race mode. Now click start timing and then select the race you want to start timing for. The list is going to show you whatever you have set in your race order. I'm going to click race one and then click OK. You will notice two new windows are now on the screen. The lap count window will show you the racer numbers in the race and the number of laps each has completed. The not scanned window will show you the racer numbers that have not been scanned yet in this timing session. As racers go by, they will be removed from the not scanned window. You will find this window very helpful in correcting any bad data that you may have. I am now going to have transponders begin passing over the timing loop. You will see that with each passing, Trackside processes the scan and tells you the position of the racer. The most recent passing is displayed at the top of the announcer's data window. The green background indicates the racer is in first place. During the race, you will watch this screen and make sure all your data matches. If data does not match, you can jump back over to Trackside and correct the data and come back to the screen to click the refresh button. The data you corrected would now be displayed correctly. When the race is over and the track is clear, you can click the Stop, Save, Start Next button. Trackside then stops timing, saves the scanned records to a text file, then starts timing for the next race in the race order. You can see that we are timing for race 2 now and we are ready for that race. Similar to how we imported the practice scans, we now need to import the scans for the race that we just timed. While race 2 is being timed, Jump back over to Trackside and click the Import button. Select Race Scans, then select Race Number and Mototype. Be sure to select the correct Mototype here. Click Import File and navigate to the location where the text file was saved to. Find your scan file from Race 1, select it and click Open. At this time, Trackside is matching all the scans from the file to racers in Race 1. If you get any error messages here, cancel this process, go correct your data, then repeat the process. If there are no data errors, you will be asked to enter the start time of the race. There is a preference setting that you can enter to let Trackside estimate the start time based on when the leader of lap 1 was detected. Trackside can automatically subtract that number of seconds from the timestamp to estimate the gate drop time. If you know the exact gate drop time, you can enter it here but it is most common to let Trackside subtract the number of seconds you have set in preferences. Click the OK button to let Trackside load the lap times and set the positions into your database. When the process is complete, you may print out various reports using the buttons in this window. Click Close. You are now ready to set the official scores for Race 1. Trackside does not automatically assume that your transponders have the official score. The timing system would not be able to recognize any racer who is being penalized or disqualified. To set the official results that you want to post and assign to your racers, go to the window where you would normally put the results in manually. In this example, I'm going to navigate to the Motos tab. I'm going to select the Open A class and then double click in a Moto 1 box. This is where you normally would put in the results manually. Now I will click Apply Finish Results based on transponder results. Trackside will use the results from the transponders. 
If you did have any penalties to assess, you can modify the results now. Click OK and you are ready to print and post your results. This is how we have timed race 1 and then applied the results into the database. This process is repeated race after race. Jump back over to the timing window and you should be ready for race 2. Racers from race 2 may have already completed their first lap or two. You will notice that I used the same computer here to time the races as I did for importing the scan files. Normally you want to perform the import routine on another computer in your network and let the scoring computer stay on the timing and scoring window and collect scans. This allows you to keep watching the data in case you have a transponder assigned incorrectly. Though it is possible to do everything on one PC, I suggest that you let the timing PC do nothing but run the timing screen. Use another PC in your network to make all the data corrections and to perform the imports and printing results. I want to stress the importance of data entry in Trackside. If you can master your data entry, you will be able to score races with very little effort. Make it a priority to have accurate data entry. This concludes this training session, MyLabs Trackside, Intro to Transponder Scoring. Find more training sessions online at mxtransponder.com.